Hello everyone, uh, I'm Kiruba. I'm in charge of uh, business development at Team V. The brand MCoin you see here is our flagship uh, mobile payments brand. But uh, before going into the topic, I would like, you, uh, like to introduce you to what Team V is and what we do. I think it would add credibility to the, to the topic we're going to discuss. Team V basically started like any other mobile contents company way back in 2002, selling ringtones, wallpapers, and so on. And it has evolved to what is now, a, I would say, rather a digital company, but more focused on mobile, but increasingly moving into the, the games marketing, games publishing, and uh, game payments. However, we focus on specific markets. What we bring to the table is a market advantage. Uh, as I said, to me, it's, I think we should uh, uh, drop that word mobile from there, because we are increasingly focused on web as well. We all started with mobile entertainment but we also increasingly do other kind of uh, entertainment, which is basically the online games, and, uh, and also we do HTML5 games. We manage the vast portals of the operators. We do a lot of things on the digital sector, rather more specific on mobile. On the marketing side, uh, we, do, we do manage the ad inventory of the operators. On top, uh, we, we are also increasingly investing on other channels, such as uh, uh, offline, uh, web, TV, we are one of the largest uh, media procurement uh, companies in, in Brazil. And, and obviously we also do a lot of game marketing for a lot of companies. So this is our global coverage. Uh, obviously our strongholds has been uh, Latin America, Africa, Middle East and Southeast Asia. We're also increasingly growing in CIS regions and also Russia. Uh, but as you can see, we have 12 offices in Latin America with over 200 people there. This is our growth. We've grown organically. We're not funded by any agencies. We've been profitable since uh, day one. It's, it's really hard to find such companies in this sector. And even companies that are in a similar sector and in public, they're not making any money. They're, they're, making, they're posting loss. So we are a profitable company. So and we're going to share how you could be profitable uh, in, in these markets. So this is a small comparison between how the internet has grown from 2005 to 2011 in three key markets in Latin America. As you can see, in certain markets, it has grown over 100%. It's an overwhelming number, which means more and more people are using internet these days, more e-commerce, more online gamers. It's a huge opportunity. Uh, we had Vosh2 presenting here. Vosh2 had a first mover advantage. They basically didn't let Zynga enter the market. They basically did similar games, but very targeted at the Latin American market. And well, obviously, there are a lot of companies doing that. However, if you can see, though the internet has grown, the number of credit cards hasn't grown, which means e-commerce is still not effective in the market. So it could also mean that people are using other payment options. Obviously, for uh, the online games and, and mobile games, which we are going to see in the, in the forthcoming slides, mobile payments is the, is the key. If you're not using carrier billing, obviously, you're losing uh, a huge opportunity. And also, other alternate payments, which are, which are uh, quite, quite popular in these countries, especially in countries like Brazil, where you have a payment channel, payment option called Boleto Bancario. We're going to see how, how that works. So this is a case of uh, Brazil. I'm emphasizing more on Brazil here because uh, this is the largest market in the Latin American region. And obviously, the spending pattern is quite high because I think probably most of you know you have the Olympics and the Soccer World Cup happening in the next couple of years. Well, you, you never know. It could end up like Greece. But well, until then, you have a lot of money to make. Uh, so obviously, the, the number of middle class people have been increasing year on year which means more and more people are spending money every single day. If you have been in Brazil, you would realize that the cost of living, or basically any cost in Sao Paulo, is higher than in Seattle. If you're taking a taxi, renting a hotel, it's expensive, which means people are spending more and more in other things. Uh, so it's, it's a huge opportunity to tap into. These middle class people spend a lot of money. 
So this is, uh, this is the virtual goods uh, market size. Obviously, this is debatable. This is from super data research. Uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers says that it's half this. But one of the important things that everyone has highlighted here is the market size relative to one another, which, is, which remains the same. Brazil is the biggest, uh, followed by Colombia. Obviously, in our experience, I would say it's still the same order. But I hope uh, the friends from Bosch too have a different thing. For them, obviously, Brazil is still the bigger. And the growth has been 24% uh, by super data research. However, PricewaterhouseCoopers also shows a similar number. They say 19 to 20%. Uh, obviously, this percentage could increase even more uh, with, uh, with more and more companies going in these markets. So now let's talk a little bit about money. What actually works? What payment channel is quite successful in Brazil? Here there are two sources. The one on the right that you see, the 10x, is from Nokia. So you can generalize it saying, oh, it's more mobile. But however, on the left is based on our study, which is basically we do aggregate a lot of payment options for a lot of gaming companies. So it's based on that data. I've highlighted one uh, uh, different metrics here, which is one is the users versus the average value per transaction. This is, from, uh, this is uh, from Brazil, this particular data. As you can see, mobile payments dominates. They do clearly dominate. The number of users who use mobile is quite high. However, the average value per transaction is small. Why is it? The carrier billing market is not so well advanced in Latin America as it is in US, Germany, or Turkey. You have fixed price points, you can't charge a lot, you can't do multiple billing, uh, the payouts are bad, so the companies are increasingly uh, marking up uh, the, the value of a virtual goods, which means the user doesn't have much incentives to spend on this. However, mobile still dominates. If you don't have carrier billing, well, you're, on, you're losing a huge opportunity. On the right is a, is a, is a fact figure from, from Nokia. This was, I think, is from 2010, 2011, probably. What they have seen is that once they introduced carrier billing in their OVI store, the conversion increased 10%, which means 10% or actually 10x. So 10x more users started using mobile to purchase things who were basically users who weren't purchasing things. And obviously, you could talk about cannibalization here. There was cannibalization, but the revenues actually increased 5x. That clearly shows that there is a huge opportunity. You are cannibalizing the users, but obviously you're making more revenues. So it's one thing not to be missed in this market. I have highlighted two success cases here. One is Habu. Uh, we had Habu guys speaking here, and Badu. These guys, obviously I cannot point which one it is. One of it makes 90% plus revenues from mobile payments. So that's an amazing number. And I'm talking about something that runs into millions per month. So it's a huge opportunity. If you don't know how to monetize, if, if you probably, I would uh, suggest that you visit Habu and Badu website in Brazil or Mexico as a Mexican or Brazilian user, and you see how they have, uh, how they know how to monetize using mobile. Uh, obviously, they try to drive more and more users to other payment options, but mobile still rules. Uh, and, and one of the things that I forgot in the previous one was also that one of the, let me just go back. If you do see, one of the, the key things, uh, the second one from the, on the left side, the second one from top is a local payment option called Boleti Bancario. It's very popular. It's, it's a sort of a different payment. It's like an online plus offline payment. It works really, really well. You, are, you start, initiate a transaction online, you get an invoice number, you take the invoice number to a post office or a bank and you make the payment there. This is very popular. And, and obviously there are some people who say game cards are very popular and, and that rules the market. Well, let me tell you, it is not so. People make it sound like e-pins, but still, the, most, the vast majority of their revenues come from people buying those so-called e-pins through Bolet Bankari. So these are two things that you definitely shouldn't be missing. Mobile and the local payment option. This is for Brazil. In other markets, obviously, mobile works really well. These are the success cases. And OK, it's not a, just about having the right payment option. Obviously, you should know where to put your money, how to get your users. 
the market in Latin America is completely different compared to the other markets, Europe, US, or even Saudi Arabia. Uh, before that, we're going to talk about some of the localization features. There are two major languages, obviously Portuguese, which, is dominated, uh, which dominates the region because it's in Brazil. You have Spanish. Please remember, Spanish in Spain is not the same as Spanish spoken in, uh, in, uh, in the other parts of, uh, of Latin America. Obviously, trust me, there are a few words which might sound nice in Sp Spanish Spain, sorry, Spain Spanish, but it means something really, really bad in the Argentinian Spanish. So you have to really, really take this into account. Uh, and obviously, this market is still at an early stage. Even if you, it's, it's unlike Middle East, even if you could translate your game and publish it in the market, you're making money. There aren't many players. We have we've been working with a lot of Korean and Chinese companies. They just hire an agency, they give a, a language file, they translate that game, and, they, and then they publish it in the market. It makes money, because the market is at, still at the early stage of evolution. Obviously, you can add some local elements to it. If you're in Brazil, you have a Br Brazilian super cops, you can, you can put them on the game, you can put in some, uh, some nice Brazilian elements there and it would work. But still, if you're first, you can just localize, the, you can just translate the game and publish it in the market. Now that you have translated your game, how do you promote it? This is again, the source of this information is uh, where Timmy as a company has been investing in the last 10 years. And, and this is basically, I would say, in the last two or three years. If you do see an interesting thing, the cost per acquisition is far too low in TV. It's very, very less. It's almost half the investment that you would make on web. And the impact is much higher. Uh, the client lifetime value is basically, I would also call as an impact. Because we've been investing, uh, we, we've also been publishing a, a quite a few games in Latin America, and we buy a lot of this CPA-based uh, things where, you, where a user registers on the website and you pay uh, for that. It doesn't work well. We, we flush almost, I would say, 1,000 users every week out of the website because they don't pay, they don't play, they don't even log in. Uh, so the incentivized ads aren't so well effective. And obviously the cross-game promotion is also not working well. Uh, friends from Bosch they wouldn't want to share their, uh, 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 their users with, with other companies, or Level Up might not want to share, Kepasa, Soniku, no one wants to do it. If you're on your own, find the right partner, invest in TV. It's very effective and very cheap. Uh, here have, we have taken two cases from Argentina and Brazil. And obviously in Brazil, it might not be the same case if you're talking with anyone else because uh, we are one of the top five or six uh, procurement agents, media procurement agencies uh, in Brazil, especially with SBT and Globo, the, the two biggest uh, media TV companies there. And obviously the engagement uh, part, it's, it's still metrics driven, probably most of you know better than us. Uh, we do help a lot of Korean and Chinese companies publish them, uh, games in our market. It's what the Koreans think as an easy level is not the same for Brazilians. You must remember that the market is still at an evolution stage. People aren't used to a lot of, uh, a lot of games. They aren't exposed to a lot of things. So it takes a while for them to get a hang of it. The hardcore gamers probably will figure it out, but for the others, you really have to see where the users are dropping off and just remove the level or make it easier. Especially if you're planning to publish Chinese or Korean games. It's completely different. Uh, uh, the next one is uh, social networks. There are quite a few popular social networks. Increasingly, Facebook is dominating this market uh, in the recent years, but still, Soniku, uh, Kepasa, Orkut still rules. Uh, so if you can get us, if you have a social game, if you can get it to this, well, it's still, it's equally good. It's yet another uh, source of income for you. And, and obviously, these people clearly know how to monetize. They, they give more importance to SMS. They give more importance to other local payment options. Uh, the next part, the logically, the next step is community management. So you've localized your games. You know how to make money. Uh, you, know, you know how to engage with your users. You've made things very easy for them. They're paying. It doesn't stop there. Community management, as in other places, is really critical. 
and, and you really need to have local people doing it. Uh, because it's uh, Portuguese, you can't, have, you can't get a cheaper resource from Angola or Mozambique and be managing things in Port Portugal. Or the same for other markets. Probably you want a cheaper resource. You, can, you, you shouldn't be going to, let's say, Paraguay or Uruguay to, to do community management for Mexico or Colombia. It's really important that you have the local people doing it. One of the success cases here is, uh, is, is also another company that I would hi like to highlight is a French publisher come developer called uh, Ankama. They publish two popular titles. I don't know, have you heard of a company called Ankama? Oh, surprising. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are very popular in the French market, especially in France and Morocco. It's a game based on manga style characters. It dominates Colombia. Uh, and I can tell you, we work with them. If you want to know how to make money, how much money you can make in Colombia, look at them. It's a 2GB download game. Client, uh, it's a client-based game. It's not a cash. It's more like a little bit of a casual game for kids, but it really, really works well. Obviously, it's because the market is at an early stage, and they use focus more on community management, which is very local. They have local people sitting on the ground and doing it. And obviously, how do you choose a partner? Look for companies that have a strong local presence that can help you enter these markets. These aren't very complex markets, but there are a few things that you have to take into account. Even GRI, when they decided to go to Latin America, they put up a team in Sao Paulo, people who understand the market, uh, and, and that's their entry strategy. Either you open a local office there, or you just go there, uh, partner with a local company. They give you a wealth of information. Look for companies that have relations with a lot of other agencies. Uh, we as a company also in, uh, invest in offline models, but obviously that depends on the markets you're looking into. If you're looking into smaller markets as an opportunity, well, obviously you have to look into offline. Ankama, which is a quite successful gaming company, is very popular also because they do uh, a lot of offline stuff, like in Dominican Republic. People think that, oh, there is no money to be spent there. Obviously they do make money there. So there is a lot of opportunity there. And, uh, and obviously companies that offer you localization support, which is insights on what works, what you should look into, what, what are things that you can make a little better, and so on. And the last one, uh, obviously, is the payment offering. Uh, look for companies that offers you the, the right payment solutions in the right possible way. You can obviously partner with some companies from Russia if you're a Russian company entering there, but probably that's not going to work. Too many steps, the users aren't going to pay. Credit card penetration is low. And, and this uh, just reminds me of another thing. I, I was said about this thing, I don't know how, how far that is true, uh, because we don't have any operations in US. In US, it is said that people don't trust the telecom companies. They trust the credit card uh, companies or the banks. Whereas in Latin America, it's the other way around. They trust the telecom companies, they don't trust the banks and uh, the, the e-commerce websites. So you're talking about a completely opposite uh, thing. So. This is critical for companies that offer it. Now a little bit of sales pitch. This is Timmy. Uh, well, we have one more office in Latin America now. Uh, we've been in this market for 10 years. We were at the point when only beer and, uh, and bread were selling in Brazil. So we know how the market has come, evolved. We do all, all sorts of uh, investments, both mobile, web, publishing, marketing, entertainment, and so on. Obviously, if you're looking into these markets, you can talk with us. That's it. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the, the games that you're talking about are mostly um, online based uh, with the social networks? Uh, it just depends. If you're talking about social games, obviously it is better to be on one of these portals like Soniku, Kepas, or Orkut, or even Facebook. Washington has been quite good at that. So you can see how they've evolved and you can basically follow their footsteps. Uh, my, my question was, where do you see the mobile uh, market evolving to? Uh, okay, if you take Brazil out of, the, out of the equation, in Latin America you're seeing less than 10% smartphone penetration. What rules the market is little known company called MediaTek. I don't know how many of you have heard of a company called MediaTek. You should Google for it. The company rules the market. They are manufacturers of chipsets. They rule the market. And obviously, you have Samsung's and ZTEs, which also uses MediaTek for chipsets. So still, it's at an early stage for mobile. 
the smartphones probably will take a longer time. By then, you have these companies like MediaTek, which offers smart feature phones. Looks like an iPhone. It's, it could be an iPhone 7, but it's not launched by Apple. Uh, any more questions? Yes. Uh, in one of the other presentations, they talked about, uh, it was actually App Annie put some stats down about top downloads from revenues by country. I think Mexico was one of the only ones close to this region that were in the top 20, 25. Do you have any, any idea of penetration about downloads um, in, say, markets like Colombia or Brazil? Uh, well, actually, I don't. I'm sorry, uh, what platform is it for? Uh, that was an app that is measuring uh, iOS and uh, Google Play. Well, it's still, I would say it's still not the right one. Probably there is some sampling error because Brazil is the biggest region with a lot more spending power than Mexico. And obviously, Colombians are much bigger spenders. And if you've been in Colombia, you would see that a kid, pretty much all the kids walking on the street have a Blackberry. Uh, and it's a bigger market for them. So obviously, the, there could be some sampling error. I'm not sure about it. I could be wrong about Brazil not being there, but the point was, any idea where some of those larger countries stack against in terms of their penetration of an app downloads? It's as I said, the, the smartphone penetration is quite less. As sooner uh, as you start seeing more and more Android cheap Android phones coming in the market, obviously you would you would see that well. It's the case, and obviously one of the other problems with Google Play is that you can't actually use any local uh, popular payment options. The credit card penetration is still less. iPhone users obviously would have it, uh, but uh, obviously it's a, it's a, it's a rare commodity in these markets. I think Android is what, what will drive the markets. We've been talking with, with, I would say, we work with almost all major handset manufacturers in one way or the other, in one market or the other. Obviously, still, it's a feature phone market. And if it's going to be smartphone, it's probably going to be RIM, which is doing very good. Uh, and obviously, the next, or, or Android could probably overtake it when, when they start launching cheaper Android phones. Uh, yeah, thank you.